Hi there, good morning and uh, welcome back for another art lesson. It's going to be week nine this week so we're doing really well. Um, I can't believe it's been nine weeks since the start of this uh, lockdown thing but um, it's been really good fun doing these art lessons so um, hopefully week 10 next week. Um, I haven't decided what we're going to do yet but uh, we'll see. So I have uh, this week decided that we would try out doing a little bit of landscape um, because I'm getting to the, I don't know about everyone else, but I'm getting to the stage where I really want to go away, uh, perhaps go to the sea or something. And I said the other day that uh, we had a holiday planned to go to Scotland um, for uh, a wedding, uh, which isn't probably now going to happen. But um, I thought I would draw a picture of a place in Scotland. Um, I, I don't know where it is, but it's definitely very Scottish. So here is the photograph that I've worked from uh, to do my drawing. So if you want to see the video of me working um, on uh, that drawing and find out a bit more about how to maybe approach it and what equipment to use, the video is on there, but basically you need uh, a range of pencils, so you hard hard pencils for the softer shading, uh, some softer uh, pencils uh, for the darker uh, shading. I use a 4H, 6B and a 2B to do my work, uh, and then I used uh, a blending stick as well. Uh, yeah, got one of those over here, looks a bit like that. I've shaved it a bit here. Um, but you basically uh, use a sanding block to take it off when it gets a bit dirty, take the dirt off. And that's brilliant for blending um, some of the softer areas in the picture. And in the background of my landscape, you can see there's all these mountains and clouds and things. So I've used the blending stick to do that. Um, but if you haven't got one of those, you can just use a cotton bud, which I got for a pound from uh, It's a Gift, which is now open down in town. Um, then of course there is a putty rubber as well. So a putty rubber uh, is a, a really soft rubber like this which is very stretchy but it's great for manipulating because you can get it to a nice fine point if you want to get in and do some highlights in different areas as well. So you might need one of those. And then the other things that I was using is um, one of these scalpel blades to get a really nice uh, long uh, sharp blade. So basically you're using the pencil with a nice long blade but using the blade uh, point so that you can keep going. As long as you don't press too hard you can have a really nice long uh, pencil like this uh, and the other thing is a mechanical pencil which you could experiment with using for some of the finer details in the picture as well uh, so you can get really nice little uh, tiny marks with that uh, and you know consistent and things you can get different leads for these things too you can get HB's and uh, 4H's and so forth um, Okay, uh, so they're the things that um, I was using to do that drawing. You'll see all that on the video anyway. Um, but today what I'll be doing is working over with a bit of paint as well. I will be doing a um, wash of colour over the top and then working back in. So you've got a nice um, sort of neutral uh, wash over the whole thing. I'm using a blue and then I'm going to build back on with the colours afterwards as well. I know I'm slightly early uh, today, but I thought I'd get this little bit of video in uh, just uh, before I begin in a few minutes. OK, um, and I'm using acrylic paint over the top, sorry, uh, on my painting as well. That's something that I use quite a lot and I'll have a range of brushes, which I'll explain more about in a few minutes. OK, so um, nice to see a few people on there already. Um, but you can watch the video at any point um, before we start today. So that's what I thought I'd do. I'd just put something on now. All right. So I'll see you sh very shortly. I don't actually know what the time is, but I'll see you in a bit. OK. Um, and uh, happy Wednesday morning. It's beautiful outside. I've been watering the garden and things. And I've got a verbal diarrhoea <laughs> because it's so quiet, isn't it? All right. OK. Um, see you very shortly.
bye bye just watch this video if you've missed most of it um and i'll see you in a minute bye okay so here we go then and um so that's the photocopy um, that i made i used um my printer basically the easiest way to get your photocopy is to photograph it on your phone email it to yourself and then print it out on a standard printer i also printed the drawing onto some cartridge paper as well and I lightened the image up from the original drawing that I did. So anyway here we go. Let me get in the paint ready. <clears throat> so you can just about see on this photocopy here that there was a blue wash of colour over the top. Uh, that was so that when I put on the white colours you get a bit of blue coming through or the highlights and the other colours when you put those on you get a bit of that blue showing through which is pretty effective and it builds up nice uh, layers of colour quite gradually and adds to the richness of the picture so at the moment uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some highlights into the background to bring out the shapes of the mountains towards the back there. So um, what I did actually say during the tutorial or during the lesson was that um, often you work from the back, uh, the background forward so that the layers, um, so the details as you get closer overlap the area that you worked on previously. So having added in some of those um, background highlights into the sky, I'm mixing now some colours to go onto the mountain. Now it comes, I said in the video as well, it comes out quite dark to begin with, but what I later on do is use some um, glazes, which is like thin washes of colour, back over the, uh, the greens and the the browns and things that I'm putting in uh, just at the moment. Um, you probably notice you can see the actual photo that I'm working from up in the top corner there. Um, one of the things I do say is that you know be flexible about how you use the materials as well because you want something of yourself in the picture you're not just making a copy direct copy of the photograph you're trying to put something of you uh, as an artist in there too. There are a couple of points where you can't quite see what I'm doing in the image. Uh, this is me showing off the different sorts of paints. So we've got the open uh, paints just there which are um, a slow drying paint which is absolutely fantastic for um, for acrylics because it means that they a they dry at 75% less amount of time and uh, secondly they um, you can go back and work into them whereas with acrylics it dries really quickly and once it's dry that's it you need to work back over the top of it so I'm just building in uh, some of the colors in the background you see that nice blue there that sends that um, mountain back behind it and then I'm just going back in over the top of the highlights that I put in previously I'm going back in over the top so this is where I talked a little bit about how layering the paint on top of each other is a really effective way to build up a good depth of color so you can just about see the greys that I've put in the background there. I attained, I made those greys without any black. What I did basically is use burnt umber, which is like a nice deep brown, and uh, a little bit of ultramarine. You mix those two together in equal amounts, you get a really nice, almost like black colour, which is actually deep brown. But then you add a bit of white and you end up with a grey. Um, other ways to attain and make these sorts of greys is basically to look at a colour wheel and use the opposite colours on the colour wheel. So if you use red and green, a red and a green together equally, you will end up with what's called a chromatic grey. You add a bit more white to that and then you will um, you'll obviously get a different type of grey again. So here I go, going back into the sky. I'm starting to add in some of these greys into the sky at the top. 
um, there we go to get some of that uh, atmosphere in those clouds I've changed the color a little bit here I'm just uh, using um, these kind of warmish grays at the top there and as I go along blending back into the highlights that I put in earlier and I'm being quite loose about it as well what you can do you'll find as you progress through a picture is you can you can blend things a little bit further as you go along so this is where I is this bit is where I'm painting on this paper is where I talked a bit about Kurt Jackson Kurt Jackson is a brilliant uh, landscape artist but you can see that by printing bits of paint from another piece of paper over the surface of areas you've already worked on you can add a little bit of texture um, and then uh, work back into those as well so there's lots of different techniques you can use for creating these layered textured effects so I quite like these kind of random marks in there as well and just below that I talked a bit about using a dry brush you can see the technique where there's just you can just see it there's a bit of grainy sort of effect in there so I just showed people how to use a dry brush so basically it it's got paint on it but it's quite dry and you drag the brush lightly over the surface and just here I then went back in with the highlights and I used a scalpel blade to scratch through the paint while it's wet so you got some of the blues coming through from underneath and then back in with some highlights and refinements of the uh, different areas of the, the landscape so far so having lots of fun with this trying out loads of different techniques at the moment I think the next bit that I do is go back in and work in the sea yes I'm mixing the color for that now so I went for a different blue can't remember what blue it was now I think it was for Talio and something else but I've made this greeny blue sort of color to reflect the water over here then I've gone back around the rocks so I'm kind of highlighting the edge of the rocks you can see how they stand out against this nice pure white there we go so I'm just filling in those shapes you can see that rock there which has got water gushing over it and this is where the uh, blue uh, tint that I put on right at the beginning comes in use I did a few highlights on the splashing rocks at the back there and here a bit of dry brushing with uh, a white on top of the blue to add some of the highlights very randomly um, and then I think the next thing that I do, ah yes, a little bit of the old splattering, something I absolutely love. And I'm using a bit of paper just above to stop it splattering on the rest of the sky. Although I do decide a bit later on that I really like that. Now I leave that, but as the video goes on you'll see the paint dries and I think this area becomes a lot lighter. So I'm just trying now using a palette knife, so yet another technique. So we've gone from toothbrush splattering to a palette knife so I'm mixing a nice dark deep color using the same colors as before ultramarine and uh, burnt umber and I'm very loosely um, troweling in if you like with this palette knife uh, some of the dark tones and sometimes working in a, in a different or unexpected way on a painting can kind of force you to sort of work in new ways so I was being very kind of experimental if you like and that's something you could do with this uh, piece of work that you're doing for this lesson you can see I've scraped and scratched uh, some of the color on that again that helps to add the texture and here I'm starting to mix the color as I go straight onto the surface of the rocks There we go. So 
So this bit takes quite a while to work into, um, mainly because of the techniques that I'm using right now. Um, but it does force me to work in different ways and then I go back in with the brush and you'll see me gradually now work in with various colours and um, techniques to start bringing these rocks together. Um, there is a lot of lovely texture on these rocks towards the back near the water so I'm using anything from splattering to scratching to applying different colours. Some of the rocks towards the back on the right hand side were quite pinky as well so you see me put a bit of that in a little bit later too. But the the rough sort of you know scratchy way that the paint has been applied really does kind of lend itself to some of this texture that we're trying to achieve as well. There's that rock at the far in the far background. It's at these points sometimes that you start spotting the differences between different areas of the work that you've done. But um, I don't think uh, that's too bad at the moment. Yeah. There goes my dog, sorry about that. <laughs> so we're applying a bit of blue now because there's quite a bit of blue in these greys at the front. So I'm putting in blue with my colours as I work. And then but now at this point I'm starting to rework much of the rocky areas that I've got. There we go, so there was quite a bit of moss on the surface as well so I start using the pointy brush, round brush to sort of dab in and apply little bits of moss as I'm going. There we go, and some of the white sort of stains on the, or light, I don't know what it is, on the rocks, but I'm adding the textures in. So I'm using different types of marks, not only if I use the um, palette knife, but I'm starting to apply lots of detail and using different marks with a pointy brush as well as the the harshness and uh, boldness of the palette knife. That starts to bring out some of these textures. So sometimes, you know, it, it, you know, to build up levels of uh, texture and detail. You need to keep working in layers over the top of each other and just keep keep pushing, keep going with it and keep looking at the image that you're working from as well. There we go, there's in with the pinks and then I think what I do is I push some of the pinks back a little bit as we go along. But you'll see I think in a few minutes I decide that I'm going to add a little bit more of the old um, splattering with the toothbrush which is one of my favorite things there you go there so that again adds a sense of detail but also a sense of um, spontaneity and movement in the landscape actually if we look at the background there the mountain in the background you can see how some of the white areas have faded a little bit now as well Yay. There we go, back in with the white again around the rocks. Using my finger, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You'll see, if you look at Kurt Jackson's website, you'll see him using his fingers on the very opening page there. He puts a pair of gloves on and use gloves to do his painting. There. Starting to bring out some of those beautiful textures now on those rocks. I'm not sure I get much further than this because we're near the end of the video but um, you get the idea about building things up so 
I mean this lesson was about two hours long um, so you know it's take a little bit longer obviously to work into this picture but there we can see the general sort of gist of it I think I just add a little bit of the green grass because I wanted to do that I don't get very far with it though this picture was very nice because it had lots of uh, colour in it and uh, you know, nice sharp foreground pinks in the foreground as well which lead you into the atmospheric uh, sky and things bounces in the distance there we go alright so um, I hope you've enjoyed watching that and got a few ideas about what you could do with your paint so have a go and see if you can create a landscape this was um, part of another lesson uh, another video which came before this so watch that one first because that shows shows me uh, using a pencil in different ways to draw that very landscape so this is the second lesson of two all right thank you very much have a fantastic week and that oh there's a close-up of it see you soon and happy painting <laughs>